Hey everybody, my name is Mike and I'm a comic book colorist, but today I'm going to do a more general video so I can refer people back to it. It's going to be on the core blending modes in Photoshop and Manga Studio. I'm going to work a little bit in each, but I've got this grayscale painting here. Uh, it's called Pepper. It's by Art Germ on DeviantArt. And I've got a whole bunch of different layers with different blending modes here. Now the modes that we're going to talk about today are Darken, Multiply, Lighten, Screen, Overlay, and Color. And I'm going to explain what those do, how they kind of how they work, and then I'll show them to you in action. And we're going to paint this here, uh, this whole image, and we're not going to do it well, but we're going to do it in like five minutes. So the first mode I want to talk about is Color. When you have a value painting here, and value just refers to these this scale, the, the, the entire gray scale from black to white. And so white is considered having higher value. So when you hear or read other people talk about building value, you're building something lighter. It's, it's, it's a common technique to, to paint in grayscale and work dark to light. So I've just got a soft airbrush here and I'm going to brush on uh, a skin tone. So as you can see, this is just sort of a, a light orange color. Maybe we can go a little bit lighter. So we're just going to give her a little bit of color. And we're not going to go photorealistic with this. Okay. So as you can see, color mode is great for for beginners, for people who are just learning how to color. So instead of having to doodle around here while you're while you're painting, you can just paint in black and white and then slap color on top at the end and then it will you know, pick out all the gradients. Uh, so really what it's doing here is it's putting down a color based on the luminance of the base layer. So it's, it's taking the, the amount of color here, so color goes this way, this is saturation, so this is a desaturated color, skin tones are desaturated. And it's adding just that little bit of color, and then it's it's finding the the value along the the scale here, and then it's it's putting that corresponding color. So that's pretty neat, huh? Now, darken darken is probably more complicated to use than lighten. Uh, the reason being is that, uh, as you can see, you can get these big swaths here. Now, what darken is doing. Is it looks at the overall, all the it looks at all the color channels, and it decides uh, what the darkest pixels are. And whatever the darkest pixels are, it keeps those. See, so if you go really, really dark, it's just this is all everything that it's putting down. The entire airbrush is getting soaked into there. But when you go into an area that's already dark, then you can start to see a slightly added effect. So this is something that you're going to have to be a little bit more careful with. Uh, so maybe we want to just add a little bit there, and there. And we're going outside the lines. It's not, not a big deal. Okay. Now, Lighten, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. So Lighten looks at the overall color channel information and retains the lightest pixels from the, from the base layer. So that is actually pretty useful in my experience people have more even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense people have more trouble dealing with darken than lighten uh, I'm not sure what I mean I guess if you look if you use like a marker right here on lighten we don't uh, we're just darkening it up, right? But if you were to do it on darken, see, that'll happen. <laughs> so, uh, it's just, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I mean, they work, they're just opposites of each other. But uh, they take a little bit of, of getting used to. So just in kind of increasing the highlights here. Uh, Okay. 
Okay. Now, overlay is very unusual. So, and, and kind of difficult to understand, and overlay is almost one of those things you want to play with. You, you always, instead of setting your brush to overlay, you're going to always want to put the overlay layer on top because due to the way that it works, it can create some hyper-saturated values that, that, that you need to be able to knock down. And hopefully it does that here. I'm not sure what it's going to do. So overlay, the way that it works is it, it, it checks the values of the colors, and then based on that value, it either, it's either going to use multiply, which is going to darken, or it's going to use screen, which is going to be really bright. So let's see what happens when we, we use this kind of saturated color to add a little bit of If I add any kind of color in there or any kind of pressure, it gets way too saturated. And then, of course, you can just control U and knock down the saturation a little bit and create a really nice effect. Let's just say we wanted to do the, the hair the same way. I'm just picking colors at random, virtually, just to give this piece some color and prove that you can, you can color very quickly like this. And I know we're going way outside the lines. Who cares? All right. That's not bad for five minutes, right? Um. What else did we need to talk about? We needed to talk about multiply, but let's let's jump over to Photoshop so you can see that this is the a similar thing. So multiply, I just did a video, part two of my series on comic book coloring. No, part three. I do a cell shading style. I I colored a a rocket, Rocket the Raccoon from the from Guardians of the Galaxy. And, and that's how multiply is most commonly used but you can use it to so, so the way that it works is it multiplies base and blend and it's kind of like adding ink wash um, let me let me get a brush here and oh I'm, I've got the wrong color so this works pretty well with light colors light pinks, purples, reds, if you just want to add in some some shadows. So on Spider-Man here you can see I'm just I can I can block in shadows wherever I want. And we don't need to I'm not going to clip it down and you you just see that no matter where I add the shadows it it sort of matches and is tied together and that's why you don't have it super hyper saturated. You want a little bit of color in there to tie them together, but you don't want it so saturated that as you move across your image, you get a ton of that color in there. So it's gonna be present. Watch, if I just saturate that, you can already see it. And especially on light colors, you can see it a great deal. So that is multiply mode. And then screen mode is, we can go back to that other, well, screen mode, one thing that it's used for is special effects. If we just take a, a soft round brush and for some reason if Venom's eyes were uh, glowing you know we could do a, a glowing pink color or blue or whatever we wanted to do so um, but with uh, with painting here 
if we go into screen mode and I'm gonna get a super light yellow and it works as a as a hard light effect now there are hard hard light layers but it's it's great for to add a little bit of glow it's great for rim lighting um, you know it's not going to really work on the hair but say if say if there was a hard light and we wanted to add a little bit of rim light right here if this was kind of a reflective material we could add that little bit and it appears to glow just a bit and you usually want to use a pretty soft brush with it it's it's basically going to give you the lightest color i mean there's almost no difference between this on screen mode it might it might move it a little bit towards white but uh the screen is is the inverse of multiply it it multiplies the basin blend and then it inverts the outcome so it's always going to be lighter uh is basically how it's going to work it's always no, no matter what unless you pick pure white pure white is just going to be pure white uh, it's not going to have any effect whatsoever on pure white. So if we see uh, pure white on screen is no different than uh, pure white just, you know, by itself. And I, I did just create another layer and, and did that. So this is a quick, easy video. Those are your blend modes that you can use to color grayscale images really fast. Um, you, could you can color photos uh, if you want to do something stylized that way. Or you can edit photos. Uh, this is a, a great method of of taking photos with colors that you're not happy with and then use these modes to edit over it and you'll create a good result. I mean look th this looks kind of cool and it only took us I mean, it took a few minutes and we weren't even trying. So uh, good luck guys and if you want more Photoshop or if you have other Photoshop questions or Mega Studio questions uh, leave them in the comments below or uh, tweet me at the Mike Wayner. The the link is below, and I will I'll be happy to answer them for you. Okay, take care.